Why is my two-year-old waking at 5 a.m.? That's a question I hear a lot, and I'm gonna break it to you. It's because he's overtired. And this is, I mean, this is such a common scenario. What happens uh, is lots of two-year-olds, you know, they're happy, they're busy, they're playing, and they don't appear to be so sleepy anymore, especially in the daytime. Um, and we, we begin to reduce their sleep down uh, without really realizing it. We take their lead, we see their friends not napping so much, we, we just kind of move along a little bit too quick for them. And before we know it, we've got an overtired two-year-old, and overtiredness is the number one reason for 5 a.m. wake-ups. So if your two-year-old's waking at 5 a.m., the first thing you need to do is identify where that overtiredness is coming from. I'm gonna take you through this now. The first and most likely place it's gonna be is nap time. The nap, have you dropped it completely? Are you limiting it? Did you start to see some difficulty settling at bedtime so you thought, well, we should limit that nap? That happens so much. And if that is you, you're not alone. Many, many, if not most parents do that. It's, it's the instinctive thing to do. Sleep is counterintuitive and it's actually not helping. It might not have an effect straight away either. This might take some time and the effects might not show up till later. Maybe you limited the nap a while ago and it was okay, but now you're getting these 5 a.m. wakings. Or maybe you cut the nap out a while ago and at first it fixed everything. Your child slept through the night and you thought, this is brilliant. That was the right thing to do but it caught up with you, or more importantly, it caught up with your child. It wasn't sustainable. At first, losing the nap caused them to have these big crash out sleeps at night, but actually, over the long term, the overtiredness got to that level where it's like, yeah, now we're getting 5 a.m. wakings, or bedtime battles, or nighttime wakings generally, all effects of overtiredness. So, what is the nap length and position? The average two-year-old needs an average of two hours sleep in the day. It's really easy to remember. Age two, two hours. It's that simple. Um, you, you may have a two-year-old that needs two and a half hours. They may be two going on three. They may be really close to three and actually they've naturally reduced down to about an hour and a half. That's all perfectly fine as well. But as a general ballpark, two-year-olds need two hours sleep in the day. So many parents go, wow, really? And they're really surprised at that. And this is why we have so many exhausted two-year-olds. Maybe this is where terrible twos come from. They're not terrible, they're just exhausted. And we know that tiredness can affect behavior. Um, but I, I believe that too many of us are not allowing our two-year-olds to get enough sleep or not helping our two-year-olds to get enough sleep overall. So it's the nap, it's the length of nap. Two hours is a good length. But when, if they have two hours, at three o'clock in the afternoon, of course they're gonna be way too awake at bedtime. So too much too late in the day, that's not a good thing. Um, and if you try too early, like at 11 a.m., they're probably not ready for that sleep yet. So it really does count when that sleep occurs. Um, typically, between 12 and 1, so between midday and 1 p.m., is gonna be about the right time for that nap to start. And then you want them to do two hours. Um, I find that if you're aiming for, a, again, a ballpark of a 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. sleep window at night, if that's your kind of the 12 hours you would ideally pick for your nighttime sleep, then about midday to, to one is gonna be where that sleep window, that falling asleep time uh, fits. Um, so it often means having lunch and then getting down for a sleep. I see all kinds of excuses and reasons why this is so impossible and it can be other children it can be oh, I pick up from nursery then and or I don't pick up to, from nursery until this time and and sometimes it's a question of if you know if, if there's if there's no way around this then okay what can you do what is possible can the person who's looking after them give them some quiet time and some downtime what what's the absolute best you can do or the closest you can get to this or if it is possible and it means making a few sacrifices yourself and picking up a bit earlier or picking up a bit later or just shifting the routine slightly for the short term, um, then the payoff is gonna be that everyone gets more sleep at night and, and everyone's healthier and happier. So do consider what is possible and, and, and not just place shut down, blocker, can't, can't, can't change it type mentality. You know, there's always a way, so figure out a way that gets you the best case scenario that you can. 
So the length of the nap and the position of the nap is really key. Um, I've even seen this so uncannily, like, if it, I remember seeing this with my youngest and if I got her down for that nap sort of at 12.30, happily go, happily be put down, happily go to sleep, no bother. You know, if it was getting closer to one and I'm like, oh, we need to finish lunch, we're running a bit behind here. If it ticked past 1 p.m., different child. You know, I'd go to put her down and there'd be fussing and there'd be irritation. Why? Because she missed that sleep window. She was then going into the overtired place and when they could become overtired, they are more resistant to sleep because they release hormones to go, let's keep our body going, we need to stay awake. They go into a second wind. That's another episode. <laughs> and uh, before you know it, they're um, struggling to get to sleep. So it's really important you catch that wave, you catch that window just right and get the smoother settling for the nap. Number two um, is about bedtime. What is bedtime? When is bedtime? And is it consistent? Because that's another thing that could be affecting things. You might say, yeah, no, we do have two hours nap in the day. Brilliantly, from 12.30 to 2.30, we have two hours sleep. So it isn't that. In which case I'm gonna to say to you, well, is it bedtime? Is bedtime too late? Is your little one awake from that nap from 2.30? Is your little one awake for too long? And by the time they get to bed, they're overtired. Is that where the overtiredness is creeping in? So have a look at bedtime. Maybe bedtime is good, but your child has difficulty settling at bedtime, so the actual falling asleep time is actually quite late. And therefore, yeah, actually in terms of sleep, from waking up from the nap to falling asleep again is too long a stretch. So consider that, is that a factor? Um, how does your child settle at bedtime? This is number three, by the way. Um, does your child conk out like in, less than five minutes? Are they just zonking out, spark out straight away? Or are they taking a little bit of time to settle? You're aiming for more than five minutes. That's your goal. If, if it's over five minutes, anything from there, you know, is fine. 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes is all perfectly, perfectly average and fine. If it's really long, you know, even half an hour I wouldn't be grumbling at, but if you're getting up to an hour, hour and a half or more for your child to settle to sleep, then you need to address why that is. The chances are they're overtired and this, it, it's a second wind. Um, but how do they settle? Do you need to do it for them or are they settling themselves? Check out my episode on, on self-settling and look at working on the self-settle because again, if your little one can settle to sleep at bedtime, they're more likely to be able to put themselves back to sleep when they wake in the night. And maybe they do do that at 10 p.m. when they have a stirring or at 2 a.m. when they wake up and you don't even know about it. We all wake three to six times a night, so perhaps they're having wakings that you don't know about, but that 5 a.m. waking you do know about and it's due to overtiredness, that's the cause, um, but it's super, super hard for a little one to resettle to sleep at 5 a.m. If they haven't got any settling skills, they have no chance. If they have got great settling skills, they do settle to sleep at bedtime and they do resettle any other waking. At 5 a.m. they just struggle because it's so much harder and the overtiredness is at play. Um, the fourth thing I wanna um, mention here is what's your response to night wakings? Do you have one? Do you have a standard response that you give to night wakings? Because if your two-year-old gets all kinds of mixed bag response from you. Maybe they, you know, they want a biscuit, they get that. They want you to do a dance in the room, they get that. They ask for milk, they ask for this. They are, because they do at this age, they test their boundaries. It's very intelligent of them. They're seeing what you can do for them. They're seeing, they're testing out, hmm, which behaviors that I do change the behaviors that you do? And so they're, they're, they're trying out different behaviors to see how that affects your behaviors. The deal is, your behavior needs to be steady, consistent, and secure. It needs to be clear. Then they can try out all kinds of different behaviors, and they know they can rely on you. They know they can trust you, they can rely on you, they can count on you to deliver the same response every time, and that will actually create a real safe sense of attachment as well, and security. Um, and keep that response going consistently up until at least 6 a.m. Some little ones will just be done by six and they're ready to start the day and trying to resettle them at that time is hopeless and not necessary. 
Um, but otherwise, even if it's 5.30, I urge you to still try the reset all going with your nighttime response. So your nighttime response keeps going until at least six. After six, you can come in with your daytime response and be bright and breezy and daytimey. But otherwise, you, you're gonna be very nighttime response, placid, subdued, back to sleep. <laughs> and the uh, fifth thing I have for you today is consider some kind of reward, some kind of incentive for staying in bed quietly, for um, resettling at 5 a.m. Whilst if overtiredness is at play, I don't think your child will necessarily resettle. You certainly want them on that path. So set up a little chart and it could just simply have that wake up thing. It could just be, um, you can use a trigger to tell them when it's morning. It could be a light timer. It could be a little clock that has a night and a day setting. And you teach them that, that when the clock says this, it's that up time, wakey time. When the clock says this, is sleepy time, lie back down, shh, quiet time. And you teach your two-year-old this so that they have that ingrained. And then when you do go in and you go, look, shh, night time, lie down. And then you show them the chart, they're only two, so you, you don't want a complex reward system. They're only two, but you could just have a little simple sticker thing that says, you stayed in your bed quietly until it was daytime, well done. And, and you know, sticker, 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 end of the week, maybe there's a little prize. It needs to be super simple at this age. I mean, reward charts really, um, are a little complex for two-year-olds, but just some kind of reward. It might just come in the form of praise. It might just be that your little one can't understand anything in the you know, chart area yet, and your child would just work well on the incentive of praise. You know, well done, you did amazingly. Lots of positive language. Um, the clocks are great. They can understand them from about 20 weeks. If you go for the simple ones that just have a picture of a character asleep or awake, just really simple clock. Shapes, colors that they have to try and know what they mean. That's a little more complex, but simple. Uh, little character is asleep, a little character is awake. Like they can see that really clearly. They do really help. Um, getting a clock is not gonna stop your child waking at 5 a.m. So don't think you can buy a thing a product that will fix this. It's a behavior and it needs your work. And it does need consistent attention, uh, but you can do it. So look through those five things, work out, really, you need to investigate right now and work out where's the overtiredness coming from? My two-year-old is waking at 5 a.m. They're overtired for some reason. Where is it coming from? Is it lack of nap? Is it the positioning of the nap? Is it bedtime? Is bedtime inconsistent? Is it the night sleep? Are we getting such disturbed sleep in the night? We're not settling soundly, we're not staying asleep soundly at night. Is it actually the night sleep itself that's causing the overtiredness? Once you investigate what it is, then you can approach that thing, replenish that sleep tank, get them restored and replenished, and you'll start to see those 5 a.m. waking slowly disappear. But stay with it, it doesn't happen overnight. Take care. And please do share this with any other sleep deprived parents you know of two year olds because this is a huge topic. So many parents out there are suffering with this. So please do pay it forward and share it with anybody else that's struggling with this right now. If you subscribe to our channel, you're gonna get notifications of when we release new episodes of The Sleep Nanny Show. And take a look for the link. There will be a link here that will lead you to a really handy printable guide um, that will help you as you troubleshoot this tricky thing of two-year-olds waking at 5 a.m. Take care.